Oke. Okay, um, this um, is the slides uh, for, um, for week 14. Uh, as I mentioned um, earlier, the topic will be AC network power analysis. AC networks uh, in terms of uh, parallel connected um, AC circuit or AC network. Okay, um, this is uh, the learning outcomes. Um, at the end, um, we students uh, should be able to analyze AC powers in uh, parallel connected networks. And if you um, look at uh, our practical environment, I mean, uh, what you have in, in your life, uh, basically, we are living in a parallel connected networks, meaning that, um, I, I mean, in terms of power supplies. La. In terms of power supplies, mean um, if you have a look at your power outlets in, in at your home, so um, the power outlet is basically uh, considered as a parallel connected networks. Uh, since we have a few power outlets in several power outlets in, uh, at our place, as well as uh, maybe if you have an extension wire and so on. So if you look at the connection of um, in the domestic use, basically it's considered as a parallel connected uh, networks. So we're going to have a one um, a power bus bar. For example, we have um, 240 volts all over the, uh, our place. And we just um, put in um, or connect our load uh, in a form of uh, parallel connected um, loads. So that's bring to uh, what we um, gonna learn today, which is uh, about how to um, calculate uh, the loads or the powers uh, connected to our net. Um, our circuit uh, for example um, here we have AC circuit and if you have a look at uh, domestic use um, how do we calculate the total um, usage of um, in terms of power in at for this for domestic use here are the um, actually um, simplified um, version of a parallel connected networks for example, we have um, here we have one, two, three, and up to n load. Let's say we have three loads. For example, he, this is our washing machine, this is our televisions, this is our whatever uh, refrigerators, and so on. So this is what um, we have at our home or at our place, and uh, the the bus bar or the voltage supplied to our um, loads here uh, in Malaysia, maybe um, if you have a single um, phase uh, system, it is 240 volts over here. Maybe if um, you look at industry, um, industrial user, maybe they will have over here three phase uh, voltage supply, which is in Malaysia, maybe it's quite different in, in your country. Uh, other country, I mean, for example, for in United States and so on. So in Malaysia for three phase uh, water supply, normally this is uh, 415 uh, volts. And um, looking at the parallel connected loads, uh, each load have its um, own um, load characteristic or its own uh, power characteristic. For example, in load in branch number one, we have um, stated value of P, P value of uh, its creative power. If you look at, um, for example, yeah, if this is a, let's say, uh, this is a, an A con, uh, um, air conditioner. If you know that air conditioner is considered as um, induct, uh, have an inductive characteristic. Why I said that? Because 
in um, air conditioner, normally we have coils. Coils, uh, maybe we can, uh, it's uh, equ equivalent to uh, inductors um, that we um, have for basic um, components. So, uh, of course, in uh, to deliver power to consumer or to users, of course, we're going to have a uh, watt over here or power, uh, active power. And the reactive power is due to the component that I, I mentioned just now. If this is uh, an air conditioner, maybe uh, this is due to the inductor connected to the, uh, I mean, inductor available inside the uh, air conditioner and of course uh, for if uh, for the second um, loads over here if we consider this one as a power bank power bank normally um, you don't it's very hard to find in in for domestic user but if um, you are an industry if you consider an industrial user maybe they will have a capacitor bank at their um, um, factory or, um, or maybe at their building, something like that. So if you have a capacitor bank, normally um, the, the power associated to that um, elements or to that um, devices device is um, more towards a capacitive characteristic or capacitive nature. So of course, to deliver power, we're going to have um, active power over here. And the reactive power, since um, the, the device itself is a uh, capacitive in nature, so we're going to have a, a negative value of uh, our reactive power. This is mainly due to uh, the capacitive component inside the device. OK. Um, We, we move on and if you consider a Kirchhoff current law, uh, of course, for parallel connected um, circuit, the total current over here is the summation of the current at each branch. So here we have I equals to I1, blah, 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 and up to IN. I mean, the summation of current at each branch will contribute into I. And if you would like to calculate the complex power in total, what you try to do is you try to have, uh, you try to take the product of uh, voltage over here and multiply it with the current, remember, to get the actual value of your complex power, you need to put conjugate of I. So you multiply V and I conjugate in order for you to get a complex power. From the complex power, you will um, have your, um, if you change it, uh, the com uh, if you change the complex power um, from polar to rectangular, you will um, get the information of your total active power as well as total um, reactive power. And, um, other than that, if you um, have this value, let me put something to sketch over here. Right. Okay, let's say uh, we consider only up until this point. Okay, this is not considered. Okay, maybe we consider only three branches. Okay, let's say this is not considered as well. Okay, if you have the information of P1, P2, and P3, for example, you know P1 for branch number one, uh, the value of P1 is, let's say, uh, 10 watt. Over here, we have 20 watts. Over here, we have 30 watts. Example, yeah? So, the Total power over here is just you can get you can get it just by simply add all those three power values. 
active power value. So here we have 10 plus 20 plus 30. And for the total power, you're going to have what? About 60 watts over here. This is watts. The unit is watts. Okay. Regarding for uh, about what I've um, explained earlier about this complex power, remember that this equation S is a vector, meaning that you're going to have S in terms of its magnitude and in terms of its angle. Okay. So what I just explained to you guys is about this is a polar representation and if you convert this vector into a rectangular uh, a rectangular form in a rectangular form you will get the information of your active power as well as your reactive power i put it as plus minus over here because i don't know what is the um, the sign of this data let's say you put it as plus minus as well okay and since uh, we are using the total current over here, meaning that we're going to have a total complex power. And basically, this is a total complex power, and this is a total apparent power. And this is also a total active and total reactive power. So that's what's going to happen from this uh, voltage and current multiplication. And other than that, as uh, I mentioned just now, you can also, if you have this P value, uh, P1, P2, and P3 value, you can simply add those three values to get your total active power over here. Okay. Same goes to reactive power. For reactive power, um, let's say uh, we consider this one. This is, let's say, this is 10 bars. Okay, this is negative 20, for example, yeah. And this is 30 bars. Okay, bars. If we know these three values, Q1, Q2, and also Q3, you can simply get your total reactive power just by adding those three values of reactive power. In this case, we have this one is um, 10, as we mentioned just now, plus negative 20. Plus 30. So since this is plus minus, then we do the minus over here. It is not because of this is this should be minus. This is because of this um, the sign of our um, reactive power. Actually, to get reactive power, Q total is summation from 1 until n of your qn okay and um, for the complex power since you know what is your p total okay and also you know what is your q total okay, remember that p is the um, horizontal line or real um, component or active real component over here and Q is the imaginary part means that it is the vertical part over here okay. 
and S is the vector that we have here. So the S total magnitude is over here. This is the magnitude of the S total and the angle of S total is over here. Theta S total. And from there, you can also calculate your power factor, total power factor by using the information of your P total and your S total. And, and before that, uh, if, if you remember during um, your time at school, how do you calculate this, this hype, not hypotenuse, this, yeah, the has hypotenuse um, uh, vector. So what you have over here for to calculate the magnitude, basically this is the magnitude of your complex power or name as um, your apparent power, the complex power should be over here apparent power because it is the magnitude of the vector itself run okay, the magnitude of this vector is given by p t squared plus q t squared and you need to square root of it so in other words this is basically a simple um, Hypotenuse theorem, the way you find the, the diagonal vector, the, the length of the diagonal vector. All right, um, in terms of um, power factor, ah, Pythagoras theorem, yeah, of course. Not um, hypotenuse, Pythagoras theorem, yeah. Thank you, Nasif. Forgot about that. Um, anyway. Um, to get the power factor, you can use this formula, Pt divided by, uh, I mean, the, the magnitude of this vector okay, in horizontal line divided by the, the length of this uh, vector, or you can also use cos theta. And here, the theta we are looking at is the theta of our um, complex power. So the angle is over here, yeah? The angle of this um, uh, triangle or the, the, the diagonal part of this triangle. So this is known as a uh, power triangle. And power triangle for network may be obtained by joining the power triangle each branches in the network. For example, if you look at what we have in, in this circuit, the first one, okay, let's say uh, I try to put something over here. This branch, we're going to have its own power triangle and maybe we should uh, draw it like this because the Q is positive so it upwards and this branch also will have its own power triangle for example this uh, in this pattern because um, the reactive power is negative so we're going to have a, a power triangle pointing downwards and for the last branch, here we have, again, pointing upward because the Q over here is positive. And uh, here we have, if we have like three branches in our circuit, so we're going to have three power triangles um, associated for each, each branches. And if looking at the um from the source uh, per se here we're gonna have i don't know maybe like this or maybe the other way around in terms of its power triangle however here we're gonna have p total q total 
and over here we have s daughter magnitude and the the one that we have um, at branch number one basically this is p1 this is q1 and over here we're going to have s1 for branch number two here is s2 here is uh, q2 and remember q2 is a negative okay and we have uh, p2 over here for the third one we have p3 for the uh, horizontal line uh, for the vertical one we have um, q3 uh, of course this is a positive value so we draw it pointing upwards all right that is for s3 and the way we combine this three or uh, if we combine these three power triangles we will get into this power triangle if we combine these three so the way we combine it is by looking at here. If look at if looking at this this diagram, basically it's uh, a bit in a po opposite direction for what we have earlier in previous slide, because here we consider if the Q is positive, the triangle is uh, will be draw like we will uh, we will draw like this. Um, where it is pointing upwards however if you look at over here if we consider q is positive it is pointing downwards over here that doesn't matter whether you are uh, put it like this or put it as what we defined earlier so let's have a look at what we have defined earlier earlier we know that for p first triangle it's like this okay this is considering that q over here q1 is a positive value and for the next power triangle power triangle number two is maybe a bit longer because we know that this is 10 this should be 20 so this q is draw like this because we consider if the power triangle is pointing downwards means that the q is a negative value and the third one the third one we should put it over here and the value of our Q is should be okay. and we know that this is Q three where Q three is thirty. Let's see basically what happened over here is that we're gonna have 10 here we have minus 20 and here we have 30 and if we combine all these um, uh, reactive power the total of react our reactive power is a positive 10 so that's why here we have if we com try to combine all these three power triangle, we start over here, P1, 10 plus 20 plus 30. Here we have P equal to 60. And for the Q, okay, for the Q, we, we will have 10. Okay. 
let's see. Mm, did I did something wrong over here? Mm, 10, 10, this is 10. Okay, yeah, I did something wrong over here because the value is not 10. Basically, the value over here should be 20. I it is this one. 10 plus 30 is 40. 40 minus 20 is plus 20. Okay. If you look at the line that we have here is 60. And over here we have plus 20. Okay, you can either draw like this or draw like this if you have uh it, for example what what we have in the original uh, lecture notes over here is that if q is positive q is positive okay the power triangle will be looks like this pointing downwards if Q is negative, the power triangle is upwards. However, what we defined earlier, if Q is positive, here, if Q is positive, the power triangle is pointing upwards, and if Q is negative, the power triangle is pointing downwards. Doesn't matter, both are correct, basically. But the thing that mo uh, matter the most is how you combine these three power triangles okay the way you combine is like in in graphical um, approach is doing this kind of um, graphic multi um, graphics um, summation or subtraction okay this is how we uh, combine three uh, power triangles but if you don't know how to combine this one maybe you can just you know that this um, q total is a positive value and p is also a positive value then your power triangle would be looks like this 60 and 30 20 sorry and this is your s total Okay, if you are required to combine three power triangles, you need to use this kind of um, call it graphical approach. And if uh, you're just being asked about what is the total power, so you just need to draw this triangle according to the information of your active and also reactive power. And again, to draw this one, it doesn't matter whether you draw it pointing upwards or you draw it, you draw it pointing downwards like this. Okay. But please make sure that you put the sign of your reactive power. So over here, let's say this is 20 bar, var, this is your 60. And this part is very important for me to, or for people to, get to know what is the nature of your uh, reactive power that you have um, in your circuit. So it doesn't matter, both are correct, don't worry. Both are correct, except that you need to mention the sign of your reactive power. All right, that's um, actually the content of today's lecture parallel connected networks and the way we combine powers in parallel connected networks. So we have a look at example. For the first example, we have two, um, let's say, two parallel connected uh, networks. And I think this uh, example had been asked in previous um, test two, if, not, if I'm not mistaken. 
previous semesters. All right. Um, anyway, uh, we have the circuit. It says here, figure shows two loads in parallel. Given load A is R um, and C value, and load B is R and L value. From if if I if I gonna roughly draft my solution over here, what I can predict is that over here for branch for load A, I would definitely have a negative value of Q because I have capacitor over here and for this one for the second branch the rough idea is that we're going to have a positive value of q and it is it is due to component of l what more i can find okay in terms of um power factor power factor over here oh, sorry Power factor for the first branch or load E, I would say this is leading power factor. Lead power factor. And for the second one, I would have a lagging power factor over here. Again, it is due to the first one for load A is due to uh, the capacitor and for load, B, for load B is due to the inductor because the capacitor nature is that it gonna bring us to um, a current will lead the voltage and of course the power factor will be a leading power factor and for inductor it brings into a, a definition where current will always lack the voltage and the um, the power factor is always lagging um, in nature. So here are the prediction that I um, have in mind uh, at the beginning stage. However, I need to read the question uh, in order for me to get a specific answer for each um, question. One is the current in each load in phasor form so if you look at the circuit my strategy to find a current in each load is try to get what is the value of z over here for example let's say uh, for branch a get the value of z and use ohm's law in order for me to get the value of ia so that's what happen over here we first try to calculate z a and according to load a we have um, resistor and also a capacitor so here we have r minus j x c so x this is how we calculate x c and later on for me to calculate the current, I just use Ohm's law over here. Ohm's law using V divided by the value of my load, um, my impedance over here, load impedance. And later on, from the polar um, representation or polar form of my IA, I convert it into a rectangular form. So this is for my convenience in terms of um, if I try to add IA and IB later on, maybe it's more convenient if I use this rectangular form. Same goes to uh, the second branch for branch B. Here I will have my impedance ZB as R plus JXL. So since L over here is 700 milli, M, milli Henry. So um, I will get my SL equals to 219.94. And again, from 
um, maybe here I have a rectangular and put it into a phaser form where we where I can get my magnitude and also my angle okay what can we observe over here is that if we have a capacitor or a capacitive nature of our impedance the load impedance over here the angle of our load impedance is always going to be a negative value and of course this in rectangular form the imaginary part will always going to be a negative value and if we have here we have load b inductive characteristic the angle of our okay, angle of our impedance always going to be a positive value and the imaginary part of our impedance also going to have going to be a positive value as well <coughs> right uh, if um, you are required to uh, down the nature of the current uh, relation uh, current and voltage relationship so for load number one for ie you can say that current will always lead the voltage and for load b you can say that current will always lag the voltage due to uh, the characteristic or the nature of our impedance okay we settle the first part for the second part is that we try to get the total current supplied by the voltage source in phaser in phaser form the total current is the current over here and looking at the direction or looking at the circuit itself we know that i total is given by i a plus i b and we can easily get i total just by adding these two currents in rectangular form so that's why i keep the rectangular form as well as i keep the um, phaser form this form the phaser form is used uh, for multiplication or uh, division and this rectangular form uh, normally um, for addition and also subtraction convenience so since we have um, addition over here, um, I will use this uh, rectangular form. This is for IA, e, and another one is for IB. And again, after I get the value, I would always prefer that um, I have two types of or, or two forms of the, the, the quantities. Our first one is rectangular and another one is in phase form all right um we set also settle the second part the third one is to calculate what is the real and active a uh, real active reactive and apparent power for each branch for each branch i think the easiest way is by using this power information uh, sorry voltage and current multiplication and remember if you try to get the complex power or the s value you need to use i conjugate over here so here for the first branch to get the complex power of first branch i will use v times i a conjugate so here v is 100 with the angle of zero degrees for i a conjugate for i a conjugate you see that the sign over here has been changed maybe i put it in green color the sign that we have over here change from the first one here we have a positive 75.5 Eight nine. Now we have negative seventy five point eight nine, and you just multiply those two, you will end up with um, 
your parent power as well as your uh, angle of your apparent power and if you convert into a rectangular form this is your p a and this is your q for load a and based on what we predict earlier the value of Q should be a negative value. Same over here. Here and also over here. It's a negative value. Because of the nature of our load over here, which is a capacitive uh, in nature. Okay, we get into the second branch. We will apply the same strategy. Here, we need to take the conjugate of IB and if you look at IB that we calculated earlier, the angle is a negative value. And taking the conjugate value of IB, here the angle should be changed into a positive value. Now, when we multiply those two, we will end up with our apparent power, the magnitude of our complex power, the angle of our complex power, and if we convert into a rectangular form, this is the P for branch of for load B, and this is Q for load B. And based on what we predicted earlier, the value of our reactive power is a positive value. So it's easy for us to to like to check back our answer, whether it is correct or wrong. Now, we're going to have, uh, we, I think we we done with question number three. And uh, we determine our real active power. We also get our reactive power correct. And for apparent power, what is apparent power? Apparent power is the value that for apparent power over here, is the value of our complex power magnitude. So for load A, we have 60.9. This is our apparent power. And for load B, it is 41.4, which is the magnitude of our uh, complex power in branch uh, load B. So that is uh, for our apparent power, this is S, this is also S uh, magnitude. <coughs> okay, any questions so far? You have any question? No, okay. okay, can I proceed? Let's see. Based on the question that we have just now, let's see. I um, extend the question into here. Let's say I question number four. Total AC hours. What is the total AC power in the circuit? Okay. According to what we learned before this, in, since we have I, I total, and also we know uh, the value of our Vs or our voltage, the total AC power can be calculated in using this. Total AC power means that we need 
the value of our s parent power we need the value of our p and we need the value of our q all this is total should be labeled as total total apparent power total uh, active power as well as total reactive power so to get into this value the easiest way we have is that we will use back our total current here the complex power as total vector is given by the multiplication of vs okay in, in the question is vs and multiply it with i total but here we should conjugate the i total and from here vs is 100 with the angle of zero if i'm not mistaken later we check back And we need to multiply with I total according to the answer that we have. It is 0 0.383. 0 0.383. 0 0.383. With the angle of here we have positive 33.73 since we need conjugate value means here don't have negative 33.73 okay. and if we multiply 100 times 38.3 uh, we have 38.3 and the angle here we have negative 33.73 okay. now up until this calculation we have determined our s total or total apparent power this is our s total 38.3 83 uh, maybe i put it over here as total apparent power is 38.3 va this is va okay now if I convert this uh, polar form into a rectangular form, okay, how do I convert that? Uh, polar to rectangular. I will use this calculator. Let's say, uh, here, put it over here. And Right, I have thirty-eight point this is thirty-eight point three and three and the angle is negative thirty-three point um seven three. Okay, okay. Uh, I will have thirty-one point also equals to 31.85 minus G 21.27 okay. okay I really um, like to use this website because it's very convenient for me in order for me to uh, con do conversion and also to have a look of what happened in uh, in argon diagram you can either use this website or you can also use uh, your calculator maybe calculator is much more faster to just uh, uh, put it in in your calculator uh, and 
straight for uh, straight to uh, the calculations. Maybe here I need to calculate over there and put it over here, something like that. I, I don't know. It's your preference. Anyway, the from the conversion, what I will have over here is I will have my p total or total active power is given by 31.85 what and my q total is given by negative 21.27 plus okay this is how we get the total ac power in the circuit just uh, the easiest way is using this one uh, using this equation however if you try to use this equation make sure you know or you have the information of your i total if you don't have the information of i total let's say uh, we didn't calculate i total but we know all the values of powers over here for example here uh, p a maybe i copy this one first Right here okay now another way to calculate the total ac power is that since we have our value of active power in the first branch reactive power in the first branch and we also have the active power and reactive power in the second branch so here what we need to do is that oh i think i missed the sign over here should I should put negative value okay, to complete my answer. All right. I can also calculate my p total just by combining the information that I have in branch A and branch B. Here I have fourteen point eight plus seventeen. Point one, and it will give me let's say I think 31.9 31.9 what okay and for Q total I try to sum these two values negative 59.06 plus 37.68 i will have let's see negative 59.06 plus 37.68 it's tw negative 21.3 negative 21.38 okay, this is fast and for me to calculate what is my apparent power what i will use over here is by using a pythagoras theorem that Nassif corrected me um, previously. Here I have 31.9 squared plus negative 21.38 squared and all these I will square, square root of um, the, the, the value. 31, okay, here I have 31.9 squared plus uh, negative 21.38 squared. Okay. Mm. Yeah. 
need this one. Okay. This is the answer, and square root of the answer is 38.4 equals to 38.4. 38.44 BA. Okay, that's just, that's how. Uh, maybe let's say this is my first option. My second option is maybe using this kind of strategy, or maybe this, using this strategy. Okay, maybe you were wondering that the value over here is. Um, slightly different between those two um, approach. However, both are correct. This is due to, if you look at uh, the first one, maybe P total is 31.9. Here we have 31.85. It's more or less the same. Same goes to our Q total. It's 21.3 over here, negative 21.27. If you take the most significant value over here, it's Still, still 21, more or less the same. Then goes to our apparent power, 38.4. We have 38.3 over here, more or less the same value. So you can either use this uh, strategy if you know what is the uh, total current. Yeah. And if you don't know the total current, maybe you can combine all those powers, power information for each bunch in order for you to get the uh, total power um, of AC circuit in terms of active, reactive, as well as apparent power. Any questions so far? No, doctor. Okay, it's a bit, I think it's easy, I think, this, this example. Okay, we will get into our last example of the semester. I don't know whether this is, will be the last. Maybe we're going to have a story as well later on. Anyway, now, normally, you will come across with um, a branch or a parallel connected uh, impedance, um, parallel connected load, uh, given its impedance value. Okay. In this case, you, you will not um, given all the, uh, the impedance value because we, you don't know what is the value of R, you don't know value of C or L. In other words, impedance value, impedance value is not available or Z value is not available. So now we have all three branches in its power information value, in its power information. And um, this is what you will encounter in, in real world. Because in real world, if you have device, let's say this is a, a washing machine, you don't know what is the res resistance and also you don't know what is the inductor value inside the, the washing machine. You only know the specification of the washing machine in terms of power delivered and also what Sometimes in uh, in if you have a look at the motor inside your washing machine, it is given with the its power factor, whether uh, the, the value of power factor as well as uh, the, the nature of the power factor. Uh, maybe in in household um, devices, uh, it's quite uh, difficult to to see that in in terms of power factor information. However, if you get into industrial uh, machines. For example, if you went into industry and have a look at the uh, the machines over there, uh, if it is a motor, you will get the information of the rated power of the motor as well as uh, the power factor of the motor, how do uh, it operate in normal condition. So. Normally, this uh, all this information is available if you get into a factory or industry and so on. Anyway, Z is not given. However, you need to calculate what is your the value of I O and also the total power factor. Huh? Total power factor. And remember, 
total power factor here is not just simply you power factor number one plus power factor number two plus power factor number three. power factor total you cannot do this remember you cannot never do this uh, just by add three values of power factor and now then you get your total power never do that because that is wrong you cannot simply just add three values of power factor and comes, uh, uh, I mean, uh, that is your value of total power factor. Remember that power factor value, power factor value is between, okay, between the value of, it must be less than one and it must be bigger than zero. It, between this value, I mean, not less or equal to one and um, bigger or equal to zero that is uh, the range of power factor value remember uh, if you look at the question itself here we have 0 0.866 here we have 0 0.85 and here we have um, 0 0.866 uh, again and if you combine this the if you try to combine this, the, the value over here, you will have uh, the value of more than one. So it's not possible to have uh, to just simply add three power factor value over here to get in order to get a total power factor. So how do we get the total power factor? The total power factor over here, either by using uh, P total divide by S total or you can use cos theta of S total. Either by using this um, approach, you can get total power factor. Meaning that factor I need to know what is my total information of my circuit. In order here, uh, in other words, I need to know what is my S total. I also need to know my, uh, let's say here, I P total also need to be calculated in order to get total power factor. If I adopt this way, if I adopt to use cost, theta as total, I need to have my complex power information as given by S total magnitude total and the theta of my S total over here. And I will use this theta in order to calculate my total power factor. That is a, the rough idea of what's going on in the circuit. Okay, that is for total power factor. And to, for, sorry, for IO. IO is the total current draw by the source. So the total current over here is the summation of maybe this is I1, this is I2, this is I3. And the way we calculate current I1, I2, and I3, normally we will use I equals to V divided by Z. However, we don't have this Z value. It's very difficult to use Ohm's law. So you need to have a different way in order to calculate the current over here. And remember that this is a parallel connected um, connection, uh, or sorry, parallel connected AC network, meaning that the voltage across these three elements is always 440 with the angle of zero. 
So that is the 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 information that you need to bear in mind. All right. For the solution, I do have the solution over here. Now consider this is our parallel connected networks. The first branch uh, is 12 kilowatt with the power factor 0 0.866 leading. Uh, we have 16 kilowatt. We here we have um, 15 kvr. Okay, remember that this is. Okay, maybe I comment this. This one is p. P1, okay, P1. This is P also, but here we have P2. And this is Q or Q3. And Q over here is a positive Q because we have a lagging power factor. So we know that here I will expect this 15 kVR is a positive value because of this lagging power factor. Anyway, we go through the solution first. Now, we have branch number one. We focus on branch number one first. We have 12 kilowatt as our P6 leading. And we know that power factor is given by cos theta. But here for the first branch means that the theta here should be theta one lah. Theta one. And cos theta is 0 0.866. And if you take this information, 0 0.866, P divided by cos theta will give us the apparent power. And our apparent power it can be cal easily calculated just by taking this value, P, given in question, and also the cos theta value, which is 0 0.8. Six, six, and we will have the value of our apparent power. And by using the cos theta as well, we try to get the angle of the theta. And the angle of the theta over here is considered as theta 1. And since the power factor is a leading power factor, we're going to have a full information of our complex power by using this cos theta. And remember that the, since it is leading, you need to include a negative sign over here. So theta S basically S1 is basically negative 30 degrees. And our complex power is given by here is the magnitude of our um, complex power or this is S magnitude or apparent power and this is our theta s mm. theta s over here all right the easiest way is to by using um, this equation as um, complex power is vector of complex power is given by v time i1 conjugate first i calculate what is i1 conjugate and later on uh, inverse it back in find the conjugate value to get my original value of i1 first i try to get my conjugate uh, value of i1 and later on reverse uh, its angle or Take the opposite angle to get my uh, correct value of I1. And for the second part, I think the first one, I1 have been um, calculated. For the second one, uh, for branch number two, I will apply the same method because here I have the same information. I have active power information and also I have a power factor. However, here power factor is given by a lagging power factor. So for lagging power factor, we need to uh, bear in mind that the angle will be 
a positive value the angle of our um, complex power <coughs> okay the strategy is the same we use um, p information and also we use the uh, power factor and from the power factor we can uh, and also the value of our active power we can get our parent power the magnitude of our complex power and in order for us to get the full information of the complex power meaning that we try to get the angle of our complex power we will use back the power factor information 0.85 is the cos theta we take the uh, inverse cos of 0.85 we will get the angle of our complex power so here we actually calculating theta s but for branch number two and since the power factor is lagging so remember that theta s2 over here no s this is s1 s2 is a positive value so remember that the information or the nature of the power factor is very crucial in order for us to get the correct value of our complex power. Um, not only complex power, all the information inside our circuit. The, the nature itself really affect the current value, the, the impedance value, as well as the power value. Maybe uh, in, in this case, it will affect the uh, complex power value. All right. Um, now s is given by 18823.5 as the magnitude and the angle is a positive 31.8 since the power factor is lagging and i will use the same strategy that i uh, apply in branch number one first i try to calculate what is the value of my i2 conjugate and take the 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 opposite sign of the conjugate value of current in order for me to get the actual value of I2. So the first one, I calculate the conjugate value of I2 and to get the value of real I2 or the actual value of I2, I just take the opposite uh, or the, the, actually it's the conjugate, the, the proper way to say is the conjugate, but I afraid I'm afraid that if I said conjugate, you will refer this one. So that's why I take it at, take it as opposite value of my conjugate angle to get the re actual value of uh, my I2. Okay, that's for uh, branch number two. Okay, the interesting part is for uh, at branch number three, where we will have um, power information of reactive power and again the power factor is given by lagging so how do we um, make use of a reactive this reactive power in order for us to get i3 so here what i did was like this for branch number three i have q is 15 kilovars and since the since the power factor is a lagging power factor means that this value will always be a positive value okay and i try to get the angle of my uh, from the cos theta or from the power factor information i try to get as much information that i can that i could so here uh, i will have theta s3 uh, by take the up cost of 0 0.866 so theta s3 is given by 30 degrees and since the power factor is lagging over here means that this also is a positive angle as well so maybe i i just put it as uh, i didn't put the the sign uh, positive sign over here all right based on um the equation of uh, to find reactive power 
Reactive power can be calculated using this equation where, remember last time we learned about Q is given by VI sine theta. And basically this VI is the value of our apparent power or the magnitude of our complex power. So I put it as S magnitude or apparent power and this is uh, because of if I try to put in all the numbers over here, put the value of Q and also put the value of theta, I will straight getting my um, magnitude of complex power or the apparent, apparent power. So here by rearranging this equation, I would have um, S magnitude or apparent power is given by Q divided by sine theta and theta again over here is theta S3. Okay, because uh, the cos theta or the power factor of branch number three. And um, I will get my um, apparent power given by 30K VA. 30 thousand VA and again since the power factor is lagging the theta is basically a theta s I think I mentioned earlier theta is theta s3 and the complex power for branch number three is given by 30,000 uh, with the angle of 30 degrees VA and from this information, it is easy for me to calculate I3. First, I will calculate I3 conjugate and get the inverse of that conjugate value to get my real value of I3. All right. This on, uh, now I uh, done with my I1, I2, and I3. Since this is a parallel connected um, connection, I O that, um, asked in the question is can be simply uh, being calculated using the summation of I1, I2 and I3 because of the Kirchhoff current law definition for, for parallel connected uh, networks. So IO is given by this value or I forgot to put it as ampere over here. Uh, I will lose my half my hours. No, just kidding. All right now um, IO settle, the first one is settle, and the total power, okay, since, again, uh, back to the, the, the slide that we have over here, okay, for total power, as I mentioned, uh, so for total power factor mentioned uh, earlier, we need the information of P total and S total, or whether we can find the total angle of our um, complex power. So that's why in the solution over here, I work out the total power first. That's the solution oh, over here. Okay. For the total power, the easiest or the fastest way for me to calculate my total power is by using this equation where S total is given by V times I O conjugate. Remember that I O that we found over here is the real value of I O because we add real value of I1, I2, and I3, and we don't have a real value of, or actual value of I O. To calculate total power, we need to take the conjugate value of I O. So the conjugate value of I O is given by, uh, what different between the re, uh, the actual IO is this sign. IO conjugate uh, will, uh, can be right or can be determined just by change the sign of its angle. So first we have a positive 12.55. For IO conjugate, we're going to have negative 12.55. Right, and multiply those two, we will uh, get in, or we will get my uh, our 
complex power information where here we have the S magnitude or apparent power. Now over here I have my theta S photo. Okay, from here I can um, straight um, uh, forward calculated my um, power factor. But if you look uh, furthermore, I, I have a different idea to calculate my power factor. Maybe I, I, I will use um, active as well as apparent power. However, um, we will finish this one first. S over here, the magnitude is our apparent power. The real part is basically our total active power. And the imaginary part that we have over here is the total real. So that's why here I list down my S total, P total, as well as my uh, Q total. Right. And to calculate my power factor. And to calculate my power factor, I will take this value and also the active power value. Active power divided by divide by um, this apparent power value will give me the magnitude of my power factor. However, the nature over here, I need to determine the nature based on the characteristic of my reactive power. In in my calculation, the uh, reactive power is a negative value. Means for negative value, we're going to have a leading power factor. In other words, we actually, the, the Z total that we have over here uh, is Z total. Total impedance is uh, capacitive in nature. Capacitive in nature. Okay, so that's why we have a leading power factor. And you can also use cos theta st, where if you try to use this one, you will use cos negative 12.55 degrees. And if you put in your calculator, it also gives you only the magnitude of the power factor, 0 0.97. However, the nature over here need to be determined based on either the angle itself. If the angle is negative over here, we know that the current is leading the voltage. <coughs> um, and it is a capacitive in nature. And we should have a leading power factor over here. Or the, the most, I mean, easiest way that we can determine the nature of our power factor is by looking at our reactive power. That's why I, I choose to use this um, option rather than using this one because this is more transparent compared to what I have using cos theta um, st. Okay, any questions so far? Can you um, follow the flow of the this last um, topic? Uh, yes. Easy, right? Uh, not easy, but <laughs> oh. not easy. But you try to digest yeah. everything. Yeah, it's okay. Later on, maybe you can have a look at the example and try to digest the exam uh, the 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 thing that I explained uh, in the class. Okay. All right. Um, I think that's all, all for uh, today and for this course, I, I believe. The content we um, 
have been introduced with all the contents available for this topic. And the last slide that I have over here is about the summary. Again, we get into the summary um, of AC circuit. In AC circuit, basically, the thing that we need to remember is that we will involve with frequency. Since we have frequency, means that we gonna we gonna get into uh, a terms known as impedance. So impedance can be calculated uh, using uh, omega L or one over one over omega C. And again, the passive element that we consider, whether in AC or DC, we gonna have three passive elements that we will consider. R, L, and also C, and also the combination, it's the derivative of that. And in terms of uh, relationship between uh, voltage and current, for resistor, it's very straightforward and also very easy. If, for example, yeah, if we have a circuit consists of resistor only, and the voltage is given like, um, 100 with the angle of zero degrees means the current when we try to calculate the current will be with the same angle of the voltage so that's uh, happen over here see that the angle of the resistor in AC circuit is zero so we can say the current will always in phase with the voltage the angle of the current which will be the same with the angle of the voltage However, for other elements such as L, C, and also the combination of RL and RC, the, the angle of the current is slightly different. Meaning that, for example, if we have on L component in our circuit, the current will always lag the voltage by specifically or always lagging the voltage by 90 degrees and for a circuit only consists of a capacitor it will always lead the current will always lead the voltage by 90 degrees as well it always always lead for capacitor and always lag for inductor the current always lag the voltage uh, this is uh, considering that um, voltage is our reference. All right, for RL circuit, it depends. It depends on the angle of our impedance. So here we have theta RL as the angle of our impedance because we, we try to combine uh, resistor value and also XL value, then we, we're not going to have a fixed value. We, the angle always depends on the combination of those two elements. So here, um, the current will be always lagging the voltage by the angle of our impedance over here. And for RC, the current always lead the voltage by, again, the angle of the impedance over here. Right. Please remember that one. And the rest will be the information of power. As I repeatedly tell you guys about power in R, L, um, C, R, L, and R, C, where if we have a capacitive, um, so first we start with inductive. If we have inductive um, load in nature, we will always gonna have a positive value of reactive power and if we have a capacitive load in nature the value of our reactive power will be always a negative so that's what we have over here if you look at a column with a l column over here we have q which is always positive and if you look a column of rl Q also will be always a positive value. And looking at column C and column RC, Q 
will be always a negative value. That is a quick check on how do you can check your answer back whether it's correct or wrong based on the reactive power. And for the power factor, uh, we haven't discussed about uh, the, this one, but if you consider a circuit which only consists of um, resistor, the angle of voltage and current is always the same. And um, the difference between uh, angle of current and angle of voltage is always zero. So cos zero is one. One is considered as a unity power factor, right? If, for example, if in the question says that, oh, this branch has the unity power factor, means that, okay, you know that Q will be always zero because, because we have theta equals to zero, theta of uh, difference between voltage and current is equal to zero. In other words, of the, theta Z is always equal to zero. And sine zero is zero. So zero times VI is always zero. So that's why we have Q, which is always zero for a circuit which only consists of R um, component. And if you look at um, column L and column RL, you may find that the power factor will be always lagging in nature. Here we have lagging, but uh, the value will be in between 0 and 1. However, for the circuit which only consists of um, inductor, the value of our power factor is 0. Um, one value, which is a 0 value. And the nature is lagging. Okay. Meanwhile, for C and RC, you may find the nature of your power factor will be always leading. And the value for RC will be always in between um, 0 to 1. And for circuit only consists capacitor in uh, that only consists capacitor for the loads, the value of power factor will be always equal to 0. So here we have uh, for C column, the power factor is 0. But the nature of the power factor will be always a leading power factor. All right. Um, I think that's um, all for today. Um, we and uh, we already uh, finished our week 14 lesson. And again, this is the end of this course. Uh, hopefully, you may find it. Uh, interesting, not just interesting. You need to do some um, revision in order for you to strengthen your knowledge um, for basic uh, AC and basic DC uh, circuit analysis. For your information, this is the starting point, is the basic knowledge of every electrical engineer. Means that if you really master this course, if you really, um, what do you call it, uh, really know how to analyze AC and DC circuit, you never get like lost uh, throughout your uh, fourth year, um, throughout your studies uh, in undergraduate to become an engineer. So this is a very important course. And normally, students um, find it very hard, especially, especially because of um, this is offered in the first semester. Yes, it needs to be offered in the first semester. Basic, basic knowledge of um, electrical um, engineers, as well as um, it's like a tool for you to, um, to, be, uh, to use in your subsequent semesters in future semesters anyway um, again um, that's the end of this course hopefully you find it um, interesting again interesting and so I, I try my best to deliver 
uh, the knowledge as best as uh, the best as I could. Hopefully, uh, it being received well uh, at your side. And if uh, there is like um, you cannot um, get the information that I send or the, the information that I deliver, I think that is because of um, my um, what my weakness maybe. Uh, also maybe it's because of you need to uh, read more and do more exercise. And if that is because of my weakness, maybe um, I, I would say that that is the, the best that I could do. And um, maybe uh, in next or next time I'll try to improve again or improve uh, my uh, the, the way I deliver the course. Anyway, if you have any problem, if you have uh, if you don't understand about um, any particular elements in this course, uh, please free to uh, contact me and try. We we can um, discuss uh, furthermore, and we can also. Um, try to solve it uh, together. Okay, uh, I, I believe uh, some of you um, sometimes uh, contacted me and how can we, we solve this? Uh, I have issue on this and so on. So I think that's good uh, in terms of um, you try to communicate with your instructors or with your lecturer uh, since you, you have problem. So that's this uh, something that uh, should be done uh, in this course. Anyway, um, for the rest, um, I I really uh, wish you guys a good luck uh, for this course. And this is not the end of um, our session. We're gonna have uh, one more tutorial session on Thursday. Uh, before we enter that session, uh, hopefully you have a look at um, tutorial question that I sent uh, in or I uploaded in e-learning. So you can have a try by yourself first, uh, try to draft your answer because uh, maybe later on you can, uh, I will pick you and also will uh, try to share your uh, your answer with friends in the session, uh, Tori, our tutorial session. Okay, um, hopefully um, we will meet again uh, on Thursday before we end our session. Okay, what chapter during... Okay, if you look at... Um, anyway, Wang, have you... Um, Fill out the attendance form. Okay, good. Okay, for those uh, who missed the, the link, please uh, fill out the attendance form. Maybe I repost the link over here. Right. Um, okay, to answer one question, what chapter during test, the test two? Okay. Uh, if you look at e-learning, e-learning, where's the e-learning here? Right, topic covered. Okay, topic covered is from week 9 until week 13. And I think um, the question is not that tough because uh, you... Um, what is up? I'm missing 9 to 13. Okay, thank you, Ami. You uh, you have seen more difficult uh, question compared to what you see in test two. Hopefully, you can score good marks in test two um, on this, uh, on Saturday. Okay. Uh, before uh, we leave, I also forget about test one. Um, I'm sorry to say that. Uh, I'm not quite satisfied with your performance in test one. But question number one is okay, but question the rest, uh, the rest of the question, question number two and question number three, especially on the circuit analysis uh, part, ah, it's quite disappointing. 
So, uh, quite disappointed. But again, this is not the end of your world. Uh, it's only, what, 15 marks for test one? You have another 75 marks to catch in order for you to um, get good marks in uh, this course. So, let go of the test one. Maybe that is your, uh, like, try to stabilize yourself. For test two, I hope everyone got full mark in test two. So, please um, try your best in test two because I, 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 I know that um, the one that, that I show you, uh, example as well as exercises, tutorial, is much more difficult compared to uh, what you will see in test one, uh, sorry, test two. And maybe this is some kind of a tips that you should focus. Maybe you should focus on um, soft transformation as well as, um, what call it? Um, maybe the the way to determine, uh, for example, uh, if we have two signals, if, if I have, I, I give you two signals, let's say V1 and V2, how do we de you determine whether that is leading or lagging? So you, you need to focus on that. And uh, uh, other than that, maybe a simple circuit uh, analysis, maybe try to find power, power factor and so on. So I, I'm, I'm quite, confident that you can if if you have a look at what you have learned before this uh, in ac it's i think it's much more easier compared to um, the exercise as well as tutorial anyway um we'll see you again on thursday uh, maybe uh, we have a look at uh, the exercise that i have in the tutorial and before we leave as usual, um, we try to take your picture. Nasif, thank you so much for the Python historian. <laughs> the the word of Pythagoras not uh, come across in mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway. All right. Snap. Got it. Okay. Thank you so much for your attention today. Uh, maybe later on we will meet again uh, on Thursday uh, and we will try to have a look at the tutorial. Um, I would highly recommend that you try to draft um, the answer. Later on, maybe we can discuss um, a lot more faster compared to what we have uh, previously. Okay, anyway, uh, thank you so much. Uh, we we'll see you again on Thursday. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Um, stay safe, everyone. Assalamualaikum, doctor. Have a good day. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor.